Hello, Not Avenue Christian family. Pastor Mike Hamitry here again on Wednesday, wanting to bring you a word of encouragement from God's Word. And again, we want to continue talking about our theme of being a disciple of Jesus Christ. As we talk about that, I want to ask you the question, are you a loyal person? Because we're going to be talking about loyalty as an integral part of being a disciple of Jesus Christ. Followers of Jesus are loyal above all else. I'm going to look at Matthew chapter 10, and we're going to see how this loyalty plays itself out, especially in our close relationships. So Matthew chapter 10, verse 24. My Bible says students, and many other Bibles it says students, but that word students means disciples, learners, followers. Um, it says students are not greater than their teacher, and slaves are not greater than their master. So that means we're to be like our master Jesus and um, like our teacher and then verse 25 Jesus says students are to be like their teacher and slaves are to be like their master and since I the master of the household have been called the prince of demons the members of my household will be called by even worse names so as a follower of Jesus Christ understand this one very fact that people who don't like Jesus are going to say bad things about Jesus and if they say bad things about Jesus they're going to say bad things about us. Why? Because they see Jesus in us. They see our loyalty in us to Jesus Christ. So, don't be discouraged if they say something bad about you because you're a follower of Jesus. Because they said things about Jesus, um, said bad things about Jesus long before you even believed in him. And then I want to talk about um, acknowledging Jesus and what that looks like in loyalty. We've read this before. Verse 32 says, Everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. Jesus says, You identify with me, I'm not going to identify with you. But everyone who denies me here on earth, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Again, that's that loyalty. Jesus is loyal to you if you're loyal to him. But we want to move into a, a different section here in verse 34. Kind of shocking, kind of hard stuff to take. Jesus says, Don't imagine that I came to bring peace to the earth. I came not to bring peace but a sword now you may be having a hard time with that and I know I first had a hard time with that when I read it a long time ago I thought Jesus was the Prince of Peace and he is the Prince of Peace he brings peace between me and God my Father by taking care of the um, anger against sin but when Jesus says don't imagine I came to bring peace on earth he's saying because when I came people are gonna have to either choose me or not choose me if they don't choose me that's gonna bring division that's why he says, I came not to bring peace, but a sword. He's not out to hurt people, but there's going to be division for the people who choose Jesus and people who don't choose Jesus. Now, what does that look like? That really um, comes to be a practical thing in our close relationships. And we see that close relationships where Jesus starts in verse 35. I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Your enemies will be right in your own household. Verse 37, if you love your father or mother more than me, then you love me. You're not worthy of being mine. Or if you love your son or daughter more than me, you're not worthy of being mine. Jesus is saying, when you follow me and you have loyalty, it is a firm allegiance. You're committed in your heart. You're not going to give up. There's going to be a commitment where people are going to follow Jesus as they follow you and then there's going to be some people who are going to say no because you follow Jesus I'm not part of you and it's going to cause divisions um, with people who are close to you I know for me I remember experiencing those divisions when I first became a Christian when I was in college one of my best friends guy I backpacked with turned out to be my best man at my wedding he believed in a different faith and I was open to that and kind of explored that faith but when I saw the things that were wrong with it I thought, I got to let my friend know. And I remember taking him up to college with another buddy of mine who had made that decision to follow Jesus. And I said, I've got to let my friend know. And so we went up for a weekend, taking him back to college. Had a great weekend, went to a college football game. But on that Sunday, as we're about ready to drive back home, me and my one friend, we had to talk to this one um, friend that believed in a totally different way. And I said, I've got to let him know. And I know this is going to could potentially put our friendship on the line because I had to be more loyal to Jesus than my friend and so with fear with trepidation 
but with loyalty to Jesus. I remember laying out all the things that I saw that were wrong and where I disagreed in, in, his, in his belief. And he was kind of wide-eyed and opened up. And, um, and later he said that kind of put cracks in his faith as I kind of under, helped him understand what was wrong and, and what was um, needed to be changed and what was against God's law and against God's word. But I remember that was one of the first times where I had to say, okay, my allegiance to Jesus Christ is number one. I'm going to love my friend, but i got to let him know that I can't accept the false teaching that he was raised under that was going to lead him to a, a, a eternity apart from God. And I thought, I could, you know, the easy thing to do is to just, okay, let it ride and not deal with it. But as a follower of Jesus Christ, I had to deal with it. And fortunately, um, about four years later, he came to faith in Christ. But I remember I was scared. I was scared and um, that our friendship was going to take a hit. And it kind of cooled off, but we, we stayed friends and, and on a different level. But then when he opened up spiritually, um, he could point back to some of that day. I had another friend. That was a really close friend of mine in high school and then in college and then I actually supported him as a missionary overseas for a number of years and uh, prayed for him gave financially to him and uh, was committed to him he also was in my wedding party and so this guy when he started living a lifestyle that was away from God and had an immoral lifestyle and he uh, was choosing something that was definitely against God I had to lovingly say God I'm committed to you and your ways and I had to tell this guy hey I'm willing to walk with you and talk about these struggles and get your resources for these struggles but if you fully embrace this lifestyle that is totally apart from God then you and I there's gonna be a division there's gonna be a division because you're not aligned with God anymore you know and this is a heartbreaker because this guy was a missionary for Jesus Christ at one time but then he totally went off away, and his um, life was against what God had to say. And so I had to say, you know what, I will walk with you, but if you embrace this lifestyle, I have to be separate from you. 1 Corinthians 5, um, 11 says this, um, and this is part of being a disciple. It says, you're not to associate with anyone who claims to be a believer, yet indulge in sexual sin, or is greedy, or worships idols or is abusive, or is a drunkard, or cheats people. Don't even eat with such people. Now that word indulge is not like slip up one time or maybe a couple times. This is a person who fully embraces what it is to follow um, these lives of sin. And that's what my friend was doing. And I had to challenge him and I had to let him know. And so part of being a disciple and letting know that there might be a division is saying, I'm going to follow Jesus Christ. Now, fortunately for me, um, I've never had to deal with it in a family matter. We see that Jesus is mainly talking about if your father and mother um, might be your um, enemies in your own household. I've never had to deal with that, but I do remember when I told my young son that I do love him. I, I mean, I do love God more than I love his mother and more than I love him. And I remember that was really hard for Caden when he was a young boy. I think he understands it now, but you know that allegiance to Jesus Christ was first and foremost. And... Um, even above family and so that was a hard pill for him to swallow but I you know it's an easy pill compared to what a lot of people have to deal with you know there's one new believer at Not Avenue Christian Church who's committed their life to Jesus Christ and because of that commitment there are people in their own household who do not accept that in fact they follow a false religion and so I'm praying for that person because I know that as a disciple as a follower of Jesus Christ now that person is going to be tested so my question for you is how unswervingly loyal is your faith? Jesus was loyal to the Father in doing His will and to you by going to the cross. Will you be unswervingly loyal when those close to you stand against you because your faith is a follower of Jesus? As a disciple of Jesus, it will be painful. It will be challenging. But His loyalty to you is something that cannot be bought cannot be traded for. It is the best loyalty ever. And that's why we want to be unswervingly loyal to Jesus Christ as a disciple. I know if you be that, God will protect you. God will honor you. You may have to suffer some things here on this earth, but eternally, and with a peace in your heart, there will be a blessing. So I hope you are challenged on what it is to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Unswervingly loyal.
because he was unswervingly loyal to you first.